Hey everybody and welcome to the 8th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode I'm going to show you how to use MIDI effects for instruments and I'm going to show you how to properly do multi-sampling. Here I've laid out a couple samples into my drum rack. When I press the button on my Launchpad, a note is sent over to the input of the track, which we can see at this here highlighter on the left side, and then the drum rack processes this note and sends it to the corresponding sample. By using a pitch of minus 8 before the drum rack, we've essentially moved the entire drum rack up on the launch pad. No matter how we change the pitch of the note, the sample is always going to play at the correct neutral pitch. The neutral pitch is assigned to the note C3, and changing the pitch of the note as it's traveling to the sample is going to change the pitch of the actual sample. So having a pitch with minus 8 effectively transposes the sample and makes it sound a lot lower. A higher pitch is gonna make it sound higher. We can actually tell the drum rack to play a certain note without using a pitch device by expanding the chain list of the drum rack and then looking at the input and output section. We can see that this here pad receives a note at C1 and plays a note at C3 for the sample. So moving this 8 down is effectively the same as keeping a pitch with minus 8 before the sample. Similarly, you can create a more complex MIDI effect chain in order to get complete control of your instrument. For example, you can pitch the right side of the launch pad down 8 semitones. That makes the bottom key C3. You can also use a random to assign multiple samples to the same button in a looping order. This is called multi-sampling and the looping samples are called multi-samples. First, we drag a random onto a pad and we configure it in alternating order, 100% chance, and set the choices knob to the amount of multi-samples we will have. And now we need to place the multi-samples after the random. There are two different ways to do it. The first method uses an instrument rack and the second method uses a drum rack. The classic instrument rack method allows you to place multiple samples as if they were chains. So each sample is its own instrument. First you want to configure all of your samples properly. Make sure they're in one shot mode and snap is turned off. Next, expand your instrument rack by key and assign each sample to one note. You can do this by constantly pressing the button on the launch pad and the keys will alternate things to our random. Because of the notes shifting upwards, the pitches of our samples are incorrect. To correct this, go into each sample, go into controls, and transpose them one down. The next sample should be transposed two down, the next sample three down, etc. This leaves you with a working multi-sample. The drum rack method is less tedious because you do not have to adjust all of the samples manually. The first thing we can notice when we drag a drum rack in is that Ableton actually tries to nest these two drum racks into one single drum rack. And by doing that, it sets the receive of our pad to all. To fix this, we have to change the receive back to the pad we want to assign our multi-sample to. Next, we can drag all of our samples into the drum rack. Then make sure the input and output information is displayed. The receive of the first pad must match the play of your sample. It's easier to change the play of your sample than it is to change the receive of each of your multi-samples. And you're done. That's it for today's video. If you have any questions about it, please ask in the comments and I'll answer as soon as I can. I hope these tips help make multi-sampling a lot less tedious for you so you can focus on making your cover. Thank you for watching. Bye.